Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So a recent study out of the University of North Carolina obviously shows that the amount of steps we take per day does contribute to our longevity. However, analysis of a subset of data has shown that the type of steps we take per day also has a direct effect on our longevity. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this new study has got to offer. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Peter Doctrill, where he reviews a study out of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, which investigated sporadic bursts of walking and their effect on longevity. There are links in the description below to the article and to the studies that I used to put this presentation together. We all know that we should be up and about if we want to maintain our health and increase our chances of living longer. But just how important are daily steps anyway? While the famous goal of 10,000 steps a day might not be achievable for everyone, we all know that getting more steps is better for our bodies in all sorts of ways, which in turn is linked to living longer. Having a higher daily step count shows a direct linear association with living longer, meaning the health and longevity boosts we get from walking are directly linked to how much walking we actually do. So the total numbers do matter, but what about the composition of those steps? Are all steps created equal? For example, walking quickly as opposed to walking slowly, walking uphill or walking downhill, or going upstairs or walking down. Older research examined in this area was constrained by self-reported data from participants who at times didn't always remember accurately what they did or they didn't always tell the truth. But in the age of the activity tracker, scientists can now get a greater insight into how daily steps actually contribute to our longevity. Epidemiology researcher Christopher Moore from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill said, technological advances made in recent decades have allowed researchers to measure short spurts of activity. With the help of wearable devices, more research is indicating that any type of movement is better than remaining sedentary. In a new study, Christopher Moore and his fellow researchers analyzed data collected in a women's health study. This was a national trial investigating cardiovascular disease and cancer in a cohort of almost 40,000 American women, which began in the 1990s. In a subset of the data, the researchers examined the longevity of 16,732 women who wore a waist step counter that measured their daily steps and walking patterns for four to seven days between 2011 and 2015. Of the group studied, all of whom were individuals over 60 years of age with an average age of 72, unfortunately, 804 of the women had passed away by the end of the study in 2019. Analysis of the data showed that women who walked 4,400 steps a day on average had significantly lower mortality rates than the least active women in the group who only took around 2,700 steps a day on average. The new research actually sheds more light on what kind of walking activity may be more beneficial. In the study, Moore and his team divided daily steps into two different categories. The first covered steps taken sporadically in short bursts throughout the day, such as taking the stairs, walking to the car, or doing walk around the house versus longer and interrupted bouts of activity around 10 minutes or longer, which could have included planned exercise, such as going for a walk, going to the gym, or even shopping. After adjusting for steps taken in longer bouts, the researchers found that women who took more steps in short spurts lived longer than those who took less steps, no matter how many steps were taken in the longer bouts. The effects of sporadic steps does look to be significant, with each initial increase of 1,000 sporadic steps per day being associated 
with a 28% decrease in mortality. That said, uninterrupted bouts of walking are of course important too. With women taking over 2,000 steps a day in these longer sessions, being about 32% less likely to pass away during the study than the women who didn't. So my takeaway from the results, women who walked 4,400 steps a day in total showed lower mortality rates than the least active women who only took 2,700 steps a day. 1,000 sporadic steps a day were associated with a 28% decrease in mortality of women during the trial. Women taking 2,000 steps a day in longer walking sessions were about 32% less likely to pass away than women who didn't. So take more than 4,500 steps a day and of those 4,500 have at least 1,000 of them being sporadic. Christopher Moore closed by saying this is just one study but it suggests that there is a lot more flexibility in the way people can accumulate physical activity throughout the day. A lot of people think you need to go to the gym and have long bouts of continuous exercise, but you can be active without going to the gym. And that's more feasible for a lot more people, especially those like the participants in this study who were older women. Older adults have a lot of barriers to doing more structured exercise. So there could be a link to the number of steps a day you take and a disease that claims 27,000 deaths a year in older people. Sarcopenia is the loss of muscle mass specifically related to aging. Now it is normal to lose some muscle mass as you age. However, sarcopenia describes severe muscle loss that strays away from the norm. Sarcopenia affects your gait, your balance and your overall ability to perform simple daily tasks. By taking more steps every day, your muscle memory should help you maintain a healthy gait and hopefully help you from falling. So sarcopenia is an issue, but just half an hour's moderate exercise each day, such as jogging or even brisk walking, will help keep your system working and will help keep you fit. These numbers from a 2010 study, and there's a link in the description below, are indeed quite sobering. A recent meta-analysis revealed that following a hip fracture, women had a five-fold increase and men almost an eight-fold increase in the relative likelihood of death within the first three months following that break. And this is compared to an age-related and sex-related control group. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. I have to disagree with his closing statement where he says, older adults have a lot of barriers to doing more structured exercise. I'd like to know what those barriers are because I, for one, am looking forward to semi-retirement when I can pick and choose exactly when I do my structured exercise. I think that 4,500 steps a day is achievable, but you will need to have some kind of wearable device because tracking that is difficult to do unless you've got a monitor. The 1,000 sporadic steps a day, probably more challenging, but as David Sinclair says, 20% of our longevity is genetics. The other 80% is up to us. And included in that 80% is, are you gonna take the stairs or will you take the lift? Are you gonna walk around the corner to the local shop or will you take the car? It really is down to you.